Hey friends, it's Len here at 1A Auto. Today we're going to be working on a 1996 Dodge Ram 1500 and we're going to be replacing the water pump inlet tube. If you need this or any other part, check us out, 1AAuto.com. Thanks. So now that we're underneath the hood, one of the first things we have to do is remove our radiator cap. You do that by pressing down and turning counterclockwise. We're going to lift it up away from us, take a peek, make sure that it's not cracked or deformed in any way. This one looks perfectly fine and I would say it's reusable. We'll set that aside and we can continue. So right up here is where the drain is or the petcock. I'll just show you with this hose. Right up here, okay? It's got a little flat twist where you just grab right onto it and you can turn it counterclockwise and it'll loosen up. I grab myself a short piece of hose. Um, if you can find one that's softer than this, it might work out better for you. But essentially we're just gonna go over the end of that petcock and we're gonna make it so this has a nice drain and it's gonna go into our catch bucket so we can recycle the coolant properly. We'll get this up on here and then we'll open it up. There we go, that's fairly secured at this point. Now I'm gonna grab my bucket, a set of pliers, we'll get up in there. So I'm gonna carefully take my pliers and I'm just gonna give this a little wiggle side to side. I'm gonna turn to the left once I feel like it starts wanting to break free. I've got my safety glasses on of course and my hand protection because I'm dealing with a chemical here. Okay, we've got coolant draining. We're just gonna give this a couple minutes to finish doing its thing, and then we can continue. Okay, so now we're just gonna grab onto this clamp right here. We'll squeeze those two ears together. We'll slide the clamp down a little bit and get the hose off of the water pump. I'm gonna use my hose clamp tool. Just grabs onto the ears, give it a nice squeeze. around. Cool. Just gonna slide that down. Of course the serpentine belt's in the way, but I'll just give it a spin. That'll pull it down far enough. Take my tool off of there. Grab this hose. Move the flashlight. Just give it a little wiggle. See if I can get it to break free from the water pump. Radiator side. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. There we go. Give it a nice little tug. And here, my friends, is our lower radiator hose. We're just going to grab this hose, give it a little twist off the radiator. Just like that. Take a peek at it. Make sure it doesn't look like it's all dry, rotted, and cracked. This one looks like it's reusable. I'm going to grab this. Just give it a nice little jerk in the upward um, direction. And it should want to break free. There it is. What was holding it in? We get these right here, this right here, and then this little nub, okay? So those just slide right into here. That's where the nub goes. And then of course down here. You get this little area down along the bottom. You want to make sure that you line that up with the area on the bottom of your reservoir. So there it is, set this aside. All right, so let's get this clamp off of here so we can get our hose off. Just leave that right down there. I'm just gonna grab the hose, give it a little wiggle, see if I can get it to break free from the radiator. Awesome. So as we take a look down here, you're gonna see what I'm seeing. We see we've got our serpentine belt on here and that goes around our water pump pulley, which is right down there. The water pump pulley has the fan clutch uh, mounted onto it. So we're gonna have to remove the fan clutch to be able to get the pulley off, right? We'll have to take off the serpentine belt and then we can get to all the mounting bolts for the water pump. Um, it might be easier and we're probably gonna do this. We're just gonna take the fan shroud right out of the way and that way there, when we're doing the water pump, you'll have a clear view of what's going on. Uh, it'll be much easier to get in there with the camera. Um, do you need to take off the fan shroud to do this? No, I wouldn't say that you need to at all. Um, you could try to sneak your hands in there and weasel everything out. And you know, I'm sure it'll probably work for you. Uh, it's really not that hard to get this fan shroud out of here. So that's the way that we're gonna do it. 
Okay, so to get our washer fluid reservoir up, you're gonna use something as basic as a flathead screwdriver. You're gonna come right along your fan shroud and the washer tank, just right approximately right about here, okay? Just underneath where it kinda goes down at an angle. I'm gonna go in with it, and then I'm just gonna lift up on my washer fluid reservoir, get my screwdriver out of there, and up it comes. The reason for having to do that is because these little nubs right here go into the fan shroud and they kind of lock it in. So when I went in with the screwdriver, whoosh, one right here, gave it a little pry, it separated them from the fan shroud and it came right up. We're gonna just set this aside so it's out of our way and we can continue. So we're gonna take out our mounting bolts that hold the shroud to the radiator. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter. I'm just gonna use it on my little air gun here. You can use something as simple as a ratchet. I like the air gun because it get, provides a little bit of vibration at the same time, which will help break free some rust if you have a rusted condition. Okay. Of course, it doesn't seem like it's gonna wanna come off. I'm just gonna try it one more time, see if I can get my socket on there a little further. So when you have a rounded out bolt, and your 10 millimeter just isn't working, or whatever size it is you're using, you can go with a socket that looks something like this. It's called a twisty socket, and it's kind of rifled inside. You can see where it kind of looks like it's, you know, a Tom Brady twist there. Um, that's gonna, when you hammer it on to your bolt, it's gonna twist and it's gonna lock right in. And then as you try to loosen, the rifling there is just gonna grip in even more, and it's, continued, it's gonna continue trying to grip as you try to loosen it up. So let's get it on there. At this point, I'm gonna use my ratchet. Make sure I got it in the off position. Oh yeah, gripped right on. That's beautiful. These sockets come in handy more times than not. It's nice to have a full set of them. So you never really know when you're gonna need them. Could be a big bolt, could be a small bolt. So we just want to make sure all those bolts came out, and they did. So this can move around freely. That's always nice. I'm just going to take one and go right in this top hole right here. Why are you doing that, Len? Well, it's a good question. Because we need to take off this fan clutch still. All right, see that big old nut down there? That screws right onto the water pump itself. And so obviously we can't have this thing flopping around in our way. So we're going to grab our tool, and we can continue. Okay, so we're going to use our 36 millimeter fan clutch tool, just goes right on this, just like this. This part right here goes into your air chisel. I'm just gonna get this right on here, so it's ready to go. We're gonna put this on, so it's gonna be trying to loosen this nut, so turning it to the left counterclockwise. There we are. Give this a little spin. I can see the whole nut turning, so that's great. We know that this is ready to come off. Now you wanna be careful because when it falls down, you don't want any of these fan blades to go ahead and bonk into your radiator cooling fins. So just have your hands ready to try to catch it. Odds are that it's not gonna fall down in that direction and there's quite a bit of space between the two, but it couldn't hurt to at least try. There it is, cool. So it fell straight down, that's awesome. I'm gonna get our tool out of the way. So we'll just get our bolt back out of here. Put that right up there so we can't lose it. We'll grab our fan shroud, give it a little lift. We'll grab the fan, get this right out of the way ahead of time. Fan shroud, there it is. Okay, so we have a clear view of what's going on now. You've got your water pump right here, right? You've got your serpentine belt. You got your tensioner all the way over here. This is what you're gonna relieve tension on the belt to be able to take it off. But before we go ahead and remove the belt, we wanna make sure that we know which way the belt goes. You can either take a mental note, take a physical picture, draw a picture, 
or even if your vehicle has one of these, just take a look at the picture for when you're rerouting. This is gonna make it pretty easy. Let's continue. I'm gonna grab our serpentine belt tool. I'm gonna turn this clockwise. As you can tell, that relieves pressure from the belt. This right out of here. We could take our belt right out of the way. That way there we don't get cooling all over it. It's always a good idea to double check your belt though. In between the lines right here, you wanna make sure that you don't have a whole bunch of cracks. If this is all cracked up, you'd wanna replace it. Generally speaking, more than six cracks within one inch, which is about the size between my two thumbs, means that, uh, means that your belt needs to be replaced. This one's in really good condition. We'll set it aside and we can continue. So we're gonna remove this hose to do that. We're gonna squeeze this clamp, slide it up the hose, and then try to get the hose off of our tube. Just gonna close these a little bit more. Bring that right up and out of the way. Awesome. Just gonna grab the hose, see if I can get it to break free. this little wiggle. We just gotta get it to break free all the way around. It's getting close now. If you wanted to, and you had a hose pick, you can go right up in here. Just try to go around this with the pick in between the metal and the rubber. You just wanna be careful when you're either using the pick or the pliers that you don't damage your hose. If you poke a hole, that's gonna cause an issue. At that point, you would just replace this. I'm just gonna do this a little bit. Okay. It's gonna come up slow, of course. There we are. Check your hose. If you look right along the sides here, and you see cracks that are going in this direction towards the center from the outside in, you'd wanna replace the hose. So we're just gonna clean up around here real quick while we have the opportunity. I'm gonna clean it up and then I'm gonna put a little bit of penetrant, let it soak while we continue on to getting off the rest of this. Let's get off as much of this crud around here as possible. Awesome. Let that do its job for a minute. We're gonna take off this bracket bolt right here. It holds the tube in. You're gonna use a 14 millimeter. Nice long bolt for you. Holy moly. There's your bolt. Only needs to really be about that long, but whatever. Put that up there. Now I'm just gonna grab some pliers. I'm gonna grab onto this. I'm gonna try to wiggle it around, see if I can get it to break free right along here. Mm -hmm. This is pretty common that these just don't wanna come out. It just kinda is what it is. Here we go. It's moving pretty easy now. Once I got it broken free, try to grab with the pliers here. Here's our cooling inlet tube. So here we are friends, a quick product comparison for you. Right here, we have our original coolant inlet tube out of our 1996 Dodge Ram 1500. And right here, we have our brand new quality 1A Auto Part. As you can tell, these parts are created equal. This one's kind of bent up at this point, but if it was, you know, not bent, because I didn't just remove it from the vehicle, it would look exactly the same. You've got a brand new gasket right here. Okay, that's super important because when you push this into the um, water pump, you need to make sure that you have some sort of seal there. We're obviously gonna put a little bit of oil or maybe a little bit of grease along there. That's just gonna help it slide in when we go to install. But this part right here will fit in perfectly. Comes with the same mounting area you've got there. And then of course the other end for where your hose connects onto. As you can tell, this is a quality part and it's available at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. So we have our coolant inlet tube 
I like to use a little bit of uh, grease on there. Just whatever you got that's clean. You could even use a little bit of oil if you have oil or I guess penetrating oil if you needed to use that. I like to use anything that'll work as a lubricant to slide down in that hole so I don't rip my uh, seal. So now I'm just gonna take it, bring it over here. I'm just gonna give it like a light twist, slight push as I go. It's gonna slide right into its spot where it's happy. I like it right like that. Perfect. I'm gonna grab our super long bolt, put it right in here. We'll just snug this right up. Just make sure you have it pushed down all the way. That's nice and snug. We've got our hose. Just gonna slide it right on there. Perfect. Squeeze this down. I got my pliers. I'm just gonna bring my clamp down the hose here. I'm just gonna try to get it lined up with where it originally came from. It was happy there. It was there for a long, long time. I like to put things back where they came from. Perfect. All right, so it's time to get our serpentine belt back on. I'm gonna go over the crank, which is the lower pulley. Maybe. There we go. Around your water pump. Over this way to the power steering. Up over the top of the AC. Down under your idler. Over your alternator. And then around to your tensioner. Just make sure this is all ready for us. Cool. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna take it off of the idler. Get it ready so it's on those. All right, so let's get our serpentine belt tool on there. Get our belt ready again. Make sure it's around all the pulleys. Exactly where you need it to be. That still feels great. Grab our tool. Awesome. I'm going to go like this a couple times. That's good. Make sure you take your adapter off of there. Sometimes they like to get stuck and you don't realize it. You think you get your tool off. You leave this, you drive down the road and this thing goes into the fan, makes a whole bunch of noise. You think your engine's rattling apart. Just double check. Make sure your belt's in all the grooves going all the way around every single pulley. Obviously there's no grooves on this pulley. Got our crank pulley, feels great. Tensioner pulley, great. Alternator, idlers, no grooves, so that's easy. AC. Perfect, we'll recheck it after we start the vehicle. Here we go, friends. It's time to get our fan shroud back inside the vehicle. I'm just gonna bring it right down. Set our fan. That washer fluid reservoir blocking us, there we go. Awesome. Before we go too far, we're gonna make sure we get our fan down in there so it's happy and waiting for us. You can even start it on. Let's get this started on here a little bit. Get our fan shroud lined up where it needs to go. Right about there. Grabbed a couple of new bolts because we had access to some. There's one. All right, we're just gonna snug all these up and then we can move along. grab our washer fluid container. We've got a slot on the bottom and then of course the two up top here. This should slide right in. Just give it a wiggle. Make sure it doesn't come free on the bottom. If it came free on the bottom then you just miss the hole in the bottom. It's a, not a big deal. So we've got our coolant reservoir. It's time to reinstall. Get this nub right here. It's gonna go right down in there. This right here and then your lock. Slides right in here and locks in. Get it 
one there. And there we go. Keep easy. Take your hose. Fill it up. We're just going to spin this on. If it doesn't seem like it's spinning on very easily, you might have just missed a tooth when you're trying to thread it on. So same tool that we used to take off the fan clutch, we're going to use to reinstall. I'm just going to turn it so I get a clear view. This onto the nut there. Nice. You don't need to really hammer down on it. You just need to, um, you know, make sure it's bottomed out and then a little extra and then that's it. Because when the engine's turning, it's actually going to continuously want to tighten this. Um, so you don't really have to worry about it loosening up on its own. And grab our upper hose. Slide it right onto the radiator. Grab our clamp, slide it up here. Give it a nice tug. It's not going anywhere. It's exactly where I got it from. Awesome. All right, so we've got our vacuum tool here. It just has a couple hoses. One's for uh, letting the air out. As the air rushes past, it creates vacuum, which is gonna vacuum our system, create negative pressure. You're gonna notice that this gauge is gonna go all the way up. It needs to go up to where a 25 or anywhere past the 25 in the green is. Once it's up there and it seems like it's holding steady, we're gonna turn it off and we're gonna let it sit and then hope it doesn't go down below the 25 into 20, 15, 10. If it starts dropping like that, then you know that you have a leak someplace. Here's our 25. We're gonna keep going until the needle stops. All right, see that's just about it right there. And close this off, turn off our air. And now, we can get our coolant ready, and when we come back in approximately five to 10 minutes, we're gonna make sure that this needle has not dropped below the 25 mark. Okay, friends, it's been holding for a good five to 10 minutes here. So I'm just gonna grab our coolant that we're gonna be using. We've got our hose down in there. We're gonna let the vacuum fill the system. All right, so we're on gallon number three here. I'm just kind of holding it up because the pressure is getting, uh, it's kind of evening out a little bit here. We don't have as much negative pressure in there to create vacuum. I'll so just hold it up high, like I said. And that is it. So we'll let that drain back out of there real quick. All right, so if you don't have one of those vacuums for filling your cooling system, you can go with something like this. This is available at 1AAuto.com. It's a little funnel buddy, and it's got pretty much every single adapter you're ever gonna need for pretty much any cooling system. All right. So what we'll do is we'll find the ones that'll work for this. I've already figured out which one it is. It's the black one, the little, um, with the big cap on it. We also have, you know, the little cap. We've got the screw-ons for like a Volkswagen or a Volvo. You got a Ford over here. All sorts of neat things in there. I'm gonna put all these aside. We'll grab the pieces that we do need. I'm gonna put this right on here. Push it down, give it a twist to the right until it's bottomed out this on there just like that. This right here, it's just a little stopper. That's gonna come in super handy a little later and I'll show you why. Now we're gonna carefully put some coolant in this, just like that. I'm just gonna use whatever coolant's left in all these jugs that I might have left in there. I hate to waste anything and I definitely don't wanna contaminate any landfills. So now what you can do is you can either let this sit like this for a little while. You could also come over to one of your hoses Give a little squeeze. You'll notice that I'm getting out some pretty good air bubbles there. After you notice that there isn't any more air bubbles coming out, you can go ahead and run the vehicle for a little while. Um, once you run the vehicle and it starts to heat up, the water pump's gonna be circulating the coolant. It's gonna flush out any air that's in there. The air is gonna work its way up to here, which is the highest point. As the air comes up, something's gonna need to fill that void. That's gonna be this coolant. It's gonna work its way down in there. Once you've run it, you know it's nice and hot. All you do, take this, push it right in there like that. You lift up your little funnel buddy, like this. And then you go ahead and you put it right inside your reservoir. All right, if you end up needing more coolant, you're just gonna add. 
The way you know if you need more coolant is by looking at the side of this. You have a minimum right there and a maximum right there. You need to have it somewhere between the minimum and the maximum. Anywhere above that is semi-dangerous, only because once the coolant heats up, it has to expand. It's going to go somewhere. Last thing you want is it to come out of here and then pour all over the ground. So I'm going to leave this right in here for now. I'm going to run the vehicle and we'll finish up what we're doing. All right, so we're going to top off our coolant reservoir. You've got your low line and your max line. Let's get it anywhere in between here and here. Check it. Maybe a little bit more. If you go a little bit over the max, it's okay, but you don't want to go very much over the max because you need room for when the coolant expands, when it gets warm. It needs to be able to come up in here and not come out of here. If it starts coming out of here, obviously it's going to contaminate the ground and it's going to cause issues. That looks great. Down the road you go. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.